Hi, I'm Jim Hammond, custom knife maker from Pelham, Alabama, maker of the knife The Dragon and the novel The Reckoning by James Byron Huggins. It's published by Wild Blue Press. Began my knife making career in 1977, immediately upon graduation from Clemson University, and joined the Knife Makers Guild in 1978. My initial work with the military began in 1981 with work with the U.S. Navy SEALs. The Master Chief who spearheaded that work also trained with Arsenio James Advincula, retired Master Sergeant and also first generation student of the creator of Ishinru Karate, Tatsuya Shimabuku. The Chief wanted to put us together to create a definitive fighting knife based upon the training dictates of Sensei Advincula. The Dragon is a result of the Flesh Eater series that we began work on during Desert Storm in 1991. This knife comprises the training dictates of Jim's years in the martial arts, now over 72, his 24 years in the Marine Corps as a retired Master Sergeant, two tours in Vietnam, and also his work as creator of the martial arts training program for the United States Marine Corps. Byron Huggins contacted me when he was doing the initial work on Reckoning. Byron contacted me about a fighting knife uh, for the Reckoning for his character Gage. And he asked me for a knife that would have been solely designed for knife fighting, that was based upon proven tactical applications, that was also utilized by military personnel throughout the world. The Flesh Eater Dragon is a result of that. Being a custom knife, no aspect of the knife is mass produced. Every aspect of it is completely made by hand, by myself. As a custom knife, each aspect of the dragon is totally made by hand. It starts out from a sheet of steel, cut it out with a bandsaw, grind it to shape. This is the initial profile and look of the knife. Next, surface ground, and I would come in and freehand grind the hollow ground bevels, both the top and bottom of the knife. The knife would be ground inverted, where I'm doing the grind lines completely by feel, only visualizing the edge thickness as I grind down to it. The knife incorporates quarter inch stainless steel, full tang design, meaning that the entire profile of the handle is exposed, unlike a narrow tang knife, where the tang portion would run interior of the handle. On the dragon itself, it incorporates a tapered tang where the metal portion of the handle tapers from quarter inch stock down to 60 thousandths at the rear. The handle itself is fabricated from a solid block of micarta. It's a linen epoxy laminate. It's considered to be the steel of plastics. So that is taken, shaped, contoured, into the Coke bottle grip that you see on this handle. As Sensei Advincula pointed out, the handle is key to this knife because of the four grips that come into play with its use. The forward grip, first position grip, is a choked up grip utilized for uh, general work, for whittling, can also be used for sensory removal. The next grip moves back into an infighting position where the curved guard falls back into the webbing of the hand. This is for the knife to be drawn close into the body for close quarter, close distances with an opponent. It shifts back into the third position grip, which is based upon Largo Mono, long range, Escrima. Fourth position grip drops back one finger groove where you have the chopping capability and also longer reach. And if needed, though it's not considered one of the primary grips, it can be dropped back into the rear position for even longer distance or greater leverage with chopping. The handle of the knife the Dragon incorporates the physics of the pinch points where you have the raised back that fits into the webbing of the hand and you have the two finger grooves which provide not only added control but also points of counter pressure opposing the area on the back of the handle where it locks it into the hand. It's one of the most difficult knives to be taken from someone's hand as opposed to some other designs. For example, where the thumb is on the back is the fencer's grip what is utilized with the flesh eater is the Ishinru fist from Ishinru Karate. Most martial arts forms utilize a twist punch. The thumb will be on the left side of the fist. In the finish, it will finish with a rotated thrust with the hand horizontal. In Ishinru, the difference, the fist is brought vertically. The thumb is placed on the top of the hand and the wrist is rotated forward. What this does is bring the axis of the striking points into direct axis with the wrist, multiplying the strength of the wrist two to three times. From this grip, the flesh eater falls directly into place with the Ishinru fist. So either open hand or with a weapon, the same 
fist orientation of Ishinru is utilized with this knife. To delve into some of the other aspects of the dragon, as you can see, it is a double ground blade. It incorporates a recurved lower edge, which deepens the cut in a slash. This knife is a primarily designed as a thrusting weapon, though it also can be used for slashing and chopping. As Advincula says, the thrust kills, the slash wounds. On the top edge of this knife, as you can see, it is a double step as opposed to a concave top grind that's common on Bowie knives and other knives. Those would tend to stop and embed more and capture themselves in a slash where this allows it to cut through and also to release easier in that move. The hook at the rear of the top grind is there for a reason. It's called the Navarro hook. It was named for one of Advincula's first instructors, Tony Navarro. It was Tony and Peter Adams who were two Filipino scouts who were his first instructors. A knife, according to Navarro, can be so sharp a person can't feel it when they get cut. This is utilized to have a grabbing effect like a fish hook, to tear, to engage, and also to be a, that added component in a backslash. On the back of the knife, you can see there is a groove. This groove is called a capture cavity groove. What is designed for close quarter reinforced cuts where the thumb would hook the top of the guard in the third position grip, hook the top of the guard, apply a reinforced cut, and also more resistance in a defensive mode up close to the torso. The guard curves backwards up top. As you can see, there are hand file serrations, 20 teeth print serrations that I hand file into the blade, as well as 20 teeth print serrations that I file into the grip of the knife. These are for added control under wet, slippery conditions. But the upper guard, as you see, curves backwards into the webbing of the hand to give additional support in the first grip position as opposed to a more vertical guard. It also serves as a release and a thrust to, if an opponent's weapon is met, it would divert off that weapon and allow the thrust to be continued on. The handle is a Coke bottle shaped handle, palm swell in the middle, swell at the pommel, flared at the front to fit the webbing of the hand for maximum control. So you have the components of the profile of the handle along with the cross section of the handle with the added features of the serrations as well as the tubing which give finger purchase. All these things combine to give maximum control for the knife during use. The tapered tang, the hollow ground bevels all add to the reduction of the weight with this knife. The bottom grind is done with a 10 inch wheel. I grind the top on a 6 inch wheel and finish it on a 4 for optimal geometry for the cutting geometry for that top edge. As a Delta Group operator, Gage would know full well the use of the Dragon. Not only is the knife of significance, but the sheath is of equal importance. Speed of deployment, ease of deployment, rapid deployment are all major factors in a knife confrontation. It's a total package that all comes together in a way that's unlike most any knife on the market today. The Reckoning does for knife fighting what Tom Clancy did for submarine warfare. The knife, the Dragon, is shown on the cover of The Reckoning, as well as playing a starring role throughout the book as Gage's primary weapon of choice.